Hello, uh, welcome to the Due to Two channel. Today, by request, we're going to be talking about knives. Stay tuned. As an avid martial artist um, for most of my life, I've collected a variety of martial arts weapons. Um, as a uh, outdoorsman, a person who enjoys the outdoors, uh, hiking, um, bushcrafting, survival, etc., um, I've also picked up quite a few knives. And um, as you get older, uh, people you love and people who you care about die and maybe pass on um, a blade to you or you get it um, from them when they die. And um, that's kind of how I got some of my knife collection here. Um, they all have a little bit of a story. Um, so I'm just going to go through them real briefly. I have a wide variety of different knives here. Um, some of them I bought, some of them were given to me, some of them I just picked up. Some some are very interesting and some are kind of plain and boring. So let's let's get into it. Um, sorry, I'll be reaching across. This um, I believe is a master knife. Um, this was something I found. Um, when I was going through my grandfather's stuff. Now, what's interesting about this is it is super lightweight. It has a very sharp serrated edge. Um, but look, it's it's completely hollow inside. It's just got these brass pins for stopping the blade. And the catch mechanism, uh, like many catch mechanisms, is simply removing the bar down, allowing it to close. Now it did have a, I'm assuming, a flip with the knife to flip it open, but it's super lightweight and it's hollow, which I thought was just kind of interesting. So um, this is a master, master knife. Um, there's one I picked up at a yard sale. I thought it would be nice to practice knife throwing. Um, it's a cheap Chinese piece of steel shaped like a knife with some paracord around it. Um, and the absolute cheapest kind of sheath you could possibly find. Why do I even have it? Well, it's a full tang, which means the metal goes all the way through. So it could take a beating and it's a good beater knife. You could throw it in your backpack and then if something happens to your good knife, you have like an emergency backup. It doesn't take up much space, it's skinny. And it doesn't weigh anything, it's very light. Um, and so that's why I have it. Now, a buddy of mine was at um, Home Depot, and they said they had these cool knives at Home Depot, and I didn't believe it. But sure enough, I bought this at Home Depot. Um, it comes with this um, string, so you wear it around your neck, and this goes under your shirt, and it hangs upside down like this. And so you always have a knife on kind of around your neck. Now, in some areas, obviously, that's not going to be legal. You're going to have to check with your local laws. But it also has a uh, fairly generic, but it's very strong. It's hard to open. Um, uh, clip for a belt. Um, what's cool about it is it also has some string. So it would be a good backup knife. The brand is also Master. So they've been making knives for a long time. It's a solid piece of steel, much like the Chinese made one I had. Um, this is also made in China. So I'm assuming maybe the master knives are made in China. It has a small hole here. I'm not entirely sure what that's for. Maybe for a little bit of control. It has a nice grip 
on the back and a nice finger stop here so you could work with, with it with some detail. And the best part is this Kydex here. Got it backwards. It, it kind of clicks in. This, this thing here is what holds it in. Um, this little bump on here. I'll show you. Pretty neat. And it won't fall out. So it's another backup knife. You can keep it around your neck. Uh, my grandfather was a hunter, and hunters love their buck knives. So this is a classic. I don't know about what year it is. It does say made in China. Um, stainless steel. But it's an old one. It's an oldie but a goodie. Um, I'd like to think this is before um, everything coming from China was crap, if there was a time. Um, I'm not saying everything comes from China is crap, but um, we won't go there. This is a Walmart. Um, I found this in the clearance bin. It's a Winchester knife. I thought it was interesting. It was like five bucks uh, in clearance. Um, it has the thumb opener. It has a strong serrated edge. The serrated edges are for cutting things like cardboard, rope, and it also has the straight edge here. It has the signature of Win Mr. Winchester on it, which I think is kind of cool. And it also has a little bit of a little piece of wood grain around there, which is kind of cool. Um, it has a clip and it also has the very basic, this comes down, which allows the blade to close. See how it clicks? And then this pushes down out of the way. Clicks, pushes down out of the way. A lot of cheaper knives have this. Uh, I don't believe uh, it's an expensive feature. I don't think you'll find it on expensive knives, but cheaper knives. Uh, yeah, it's a nice little pocket knife. And what I thought was cool is it had that little bit of wood on there, making it kind of nice. Um, now here's a real hunter's knife. This is one my grandfather actually kept on him all the time. Um, so it's a little, it's special to me. Um, it's kind of big. It is a pro hunter. It's a Imperial pro hunter, stainless steel made in the US of A. Beautiful knife. He actually cleaned game with it. He kept it very sharp. Uh, it's a beautiful wood grain. Um, and it unlocks by pushing this. So you push this up and it unlocks. And you push it down and it clicks. We'll see it click up. Push it down. Clicks up. Um, fairly large size. And it's very sharp. Um, nice knife, kind of thick on the back. Um, I'd say that's about it for this knife. It's, uh, it, it's, it's got more sentimental value than anything. But this is a big, beefy leather sheath. It smells very leathery, which is what you would expect from a leather sheath. sheath. Um, gotta love that leather smell, craftsmanship. Um, I don't know for sure that this is done by hand, but... Um, it's definitely very nice. Classic, old school, nothing too fancy. Now, this is a, a cheap knife, but uh, this was my beater knife for a long time. It's a China made frost cutlery knife. What I like about this knife is it's full tang, uh, the blade goes all the way through, um, it has a hole in the bottom. So um, this is nice, like if you're in the woods, you could wrap this around something and it'll, it'll, if it happens to come loose, it's a little extra protection. Um, another nice thing is it's got like a nice wooden handle. It's, it's actually pretty nice. It's a, it's a nice blade. And I was able to get this razor, razor sharp. Um, I was taking a lesson on how to skin a uh, raccoon. And uh, they asked for volunteers, and I was the only one who stepped forward, and they said, show me your knife. And they said, that's not going to be sharp enough. 
And I said, well, let me try. And they were very impressed. So it held a nice blade. I don't know much about frost coloring. I know it's made in China, which I try to avoid. But um, it was cheap. I bought it at a, a garage sale for 10 bucks, And it's one of my first larger knives I bought. Um, now, as I started doing more and more outdoor stuff, um, I needed a knife that had that specific outdoor purpose. Not a beater knife. Not a hunter skinning kind of knife or backup knives. I needed an actual kind of woodsman knife. And so I did some research and I come up with this buck knife. Um, it is there. I forget what it's called. Let's see. Buck knife. I forget um, what it's called. I apologize. A buck knife. I don't know. But it's a survivalist knife. It has um, a groove here, which is supposed to be for striking the um, ferro rod, which it comes with. It's got a drop point. Um, and as you can see, I've been using it lately. So I need to keep to get this bad boy cleaned. It's, it's got a, a beautiful melamine handle. At least I believe it's melamine. You can see the tang goes all the way through and the back side it fits the hand very nice it's not too big um, it's a special type of steel that buck knife uses um, i believe it's a type of stainless but it's got some other advantages to it um, it comes with this sheath uh, which is a kydex holster what's nice about it is you can adjust it to fit uh, you could take these screws out and you can flip it this way or flip it this way um, you can carry it in multiple different ways what's really cool about it is this ferro rod you can see it, it kind of locks in place see that you pull it out and you could use it to strike uh, the fire and it comes built right in with the um, right in with the holster you could wrap this down around here and it keeps it from coming out to do one-handed there we go so the ferro rod's not going to accidentally kind of pull itself out even though it just did that's the theory anyway so uh this is my first kind of survival-ish knife that i bought and i really liked it it, it served me very well then i bought um well then i i had a friend of mine who started making knives and i was into woodworking and so we traded i made him um, a cutting board and um, a couple other woodworking things and he gifted me with this beautiful knife made out of the steel of a tank this is I mean an APC so um, he was a military guy and there was some scrap APC steel he was able to get somehow and this is a blade that he made it's a heavy chopper um, it's one of the first he's made but it has a beautiful handle, it has brass pins, you can see the tang goes all the way through and it's colored. This, uh, it's heavy, it's, it's a very thick blade, um, it's very smooth, it's polished nice, and I had this holster made for it because it didn't come with anything. Um, it's very difficult to probably make a big fat leather holster, something that could hold this because it's shaped kind of weird. feels good to the hand. Um, so, um, you know, you, you call your local Kydex holster people and uh, they'll hook you up. This bad boy snaps in real nice. Adjustable clips. Um, pretty awesome. Um, the thing is, because it's a chopper, it can't do a lot of fine. Um, it, it's it's um, purposes are, you know, kind of limited. Um, so... What got me thinking is I, I like the size of this, you know, the utility, and I like the usability of this. I like the drop point kind of blade. So um, when I was doing some research, I come across a very reasonably priced uh, brand of blade. Um, they sell on Amazon, and it is the brand itself is called Old Ram. 
and this is just a beautiful blade and it was not very much money at all I think it was in the 30 40 dollar range um, it has a finger groove here and uh, so you can get in there and work your um, fine detail with the drop point which is what the style of knife is called um, it has the tang going all the way through which you see it also has a nice piece of leather there for decoration and a beautiful leather holster um, it's also very thick this bad boy looks like it could take a beating uh, I've yet to put it through put it through its paces but um, I do plan on putting it through its paces um, to attach it to your belt it has these double snaps which I like single snaps are often not enough you wrap it around your belt bring it around snap them it snaps it nice snug um, I don't know if it says where the blade is made it does not um, I'd like to think it's made in the USA but um, for the price I kind of doubt it but um, quality looks good it looks like a nice walnut handle big fan uh, steel pins instead of the brass pins I don't know and then we get to my pride and joy of my collection I have Kirkurdy blades um, these are um, these come from Nepal these are custom made knives um, which these are the, the style of knives you used by the famous Gurkha warriors um, with the British Army, uh, the Nepalese Army. Um, I believe there's a, a Gurkha regiment in India. Um, so you, you do your research on it. But um, so I first bought a small one because I thought it would be a nice utility. This is um, you see it's tilted downward. And it's got this groove here. Um, people argue, because these knives have been around for so long, people argue at what this is for. Um, many people say it's for catching weapons. Um, I mean, there's a lot of uh, talk, uh, a lot of debate over what this is for. Maybe the Nepalese people know it and just don't want to share. Um, but it has a long blood groove here going down it and it's a chopper but notice it's kind of small so um, as a weapon not so much but as a nice tool um, they get very sharp it's a sharpened spring steel uh, it's from the GK and company Gurkha house which I highly recommend uh, they make everything homemade and they are beautiful it's just a beautiful knife Everything is done by hand. Uh, no, uh, no machines other than um, a few power tools. A lot of hand work. Um, they use uh, different different hides. You, you can see the leather leather work is done by hand. Um, it's beautiful, but this is just a small knife. It's it's a kukuri, but it's not the kukuri that. Um, the actual Gurkhas use for combat so I just had to have one and so I've been looking around for a long time and I finally got it this is my pride and joy this is what I was waiting for it just came in the mail from Nepal um, this is what I was waiting for to do this knife video this baby is huge it's beautiful um, it's made water buffalo hide hand stitched I mean, you can see the beautiful, maybe you can't, the beautiful leather. Let's see. Let's see if we can get you some, yeah, there we go, some nice, beautiful leather work. Um, what's nice and interesting about these blades is they come with two smaller blades, one of them sharp, and one of them dull for. It's a hardened steel for sharpening your blade. Um, there's a place for them, as you can see in the holster. Um, this is a full tang wooden handle from a local wood. I forget what it's called. Unlike traditional kukuris, 
Um, this Kokuri has finger grooves, which fit my hand very nicely. It's got the hammered bottom, which is very traditional and awesome. It also has a hole for adding a piece of leather, kind of like this, if we wanted to. Um, it's got double straps. You could do it this way or this way. Um, it's got a strong guard. Now this is actually used by Gurkha Regiment in Afghanistan, I believe. Um, it's either Iraq or Afghanistan, but it's a knife specially made to endure the desert conditions. Um, so let's pull her out of the sheath. This thing is beautiful. It is a beast. It's heavy. It's sharp. You can see it says made in Nepal. Also, the company that imports them into the United States. Um, I have no doubt in my mind that this could take an arm off, a hand off. I have no doubt in my mind this could take a hand off. It's heavy, it's thick, it's extremely thick. I mean, this is a beast monster of a blade. Um, I've held Bowie's before. Um, there's, there's no, there's no comparison. This, this is almost as thick as my pinky finger, guys. Look at that. This is just imagine. It's thick and heavy. And it's beastly. Now it's a chopper. This is made for combat. Um, it's not made for, you know, fine work or anything like that. A lot of people use them as a machete. Um, I think I'm gonna keep it at home as a decorative piece, but. I don't know. We'll see. But I just wanted to share my kukuri knife from Nepal that I got. It's a beautiful water buffalo sheath. Um, it's still, it came a little tight. It doesn't fit in super easy. I've been working it in. But, uh, these little, little accessory blades in here and I was thinking of getting a kydex holder for this bad boy but I don't think I will I, I think this is just so beautiful I need to keep it like it is so um, this is my knife collection and the little stories behind them um, I have a, a few other blades around but um, I, I feel that this is this is plenty for one video um, I do have another request for a theology video coming up next, so that will um, definitely take the channel in a new direction. I, I did, um, let's see, I did watches, I did um, a, a multi-tool, and now um, some various knives. And if you have any questions on any of these knives that I could help you with, please let me know. Um, give a thumbs up. Uh, let me know in the comments if you have any uh, criticisms or um, opinions that you want to share. I don't care. I'm all about freedom of speech. You want to be mean, go for it. You want to be nice, go for it. Um, you know, it's all good. Questions, comments, criticisms, send them my way. Um, I want to thank you guys who've kind of stuck with the channel for a long time. Um, I, Like I said, I had three kids. I just found out I have a fourth one on the way. And... Uh, you know things are busy uh, but I need to put out some more videos because I enjoy I enjoy the YouTube community even though the platform itself is kind of going downhill um, but that's what it's all about right it's life things happen so um, I'll see you guys for the next video which I plan on making a theology video um, I have a couple topics in mind so um, Hopefully you guys will find it as interesting as uh, you found the uh, multi-tool uh, video. I got a lot of good comments on that. All right, take it easy, guys. Later.